As always, this episode of the 1878 FM podcast is sponsored by Green King Sport, where football is more than a game. Make Green King your go-to destination for the season's final stretch. Why? For one, you can watch every televised Toffees game down with delicious food and refreshing beverages. And with 900 sports clubs dotted around the UK, chances are you're within walking distance of your local Green King. Let's be honest, watching football is way better with friends and family. So get the squad together for every televised Premier League fixture in an atmosphere worth sharing. That includes huge title showdowns, race for European qualification and the nail-biting relegation system. Pointers. Don't forget to download the Green King Sports app to enjoy your exclusive competitions and discounts whenever there is a game on. Right, on with the podcast. Welcome to the 1878 FM podcast. Uh, hello. Just, <laughs> Four of us start recording our, our stuff. We'd put a extra bit bonus early. feature. Yeah, that would be the cool. conversations yeah. we mm. had before. Yeah, like the outtakes. Mm. But, you know, the, start early. We yeah. used to do that, didn't we, on... Um, that's how many of our shows started. Yeah, it, it did, it did. <laughs> Before we realised Ned had actually pressed it. But on the AOB, yeah, as Ned's just reminded me we should do that. But we are joined as always. We've got full house. It's great. Sam and Dave. Yeah. A bit like Sam and Mark. Remember them two? Um, uh, there you go. How are you? How are you, gentlemen? Good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, all good. All good. Another weekend, another win for Everton. It's, yeah. just, it's, it's all good. Yeah. In the sunshine as in well, the sun sun. as well. So uh, happy days, mm-hmm. Sam. I'm great. I'm just in it. It looks like I'm in my son's bedroom, but this mm. is actually a Zoom background. I've I've sort of downloaded. So you uh, hang on, Sam. With so three beanos in it. Just <laughs> just for clarity, just so I've got this straight, mm. you've got a Zoom background that you've downloaded, and you could have probably downloaded anything, but you've downloaded your son's bedroom in the background. Yeah, I took a By picture choice. of it. And- I had to upload it first, so I could yeah. then download it. So it is a real picture. Okay, brilliant. Uh, and I'm actually sat in this room as well, but this background is fake. It's it is very much like Inception. This is it's... layers and layers and, and AI just... versions of Beano. This was so I I thought it was a tidy room, but it's actually very messy. There's stuff under my feet here, so I feel like I'm really. This is going to probably dictate a slightly different vibe from me. Okay, okay, like a distract, slightly distracted vibe. Maybe distracted or maybe just compelled to, I don't know. Tidy up. Tidy up. Yeah. <laughs> fair play. Yeah. Hey. Fair play. If fair I drop play. off and I start picking things up, apologies. No mm. worries. No worries. Oh, you see, it's just sound, hear the sound Bit of a hoover, hoover or in the background. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sam get the old shaken back out. Mm. Well, I was thinking more Freddie Mercury, you know, when I want to break Get the old that. Freddie Mercury out. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> For the vacuum. You know. Uh, want, you know, that one. Yeah, exactly. E- Sam just e- giving it up. E- as he's going past with the Hoover. You, yeah, you watch hey, can yourself. I, can I, t- just on Freddie Mercury, on. I'm yeah. to- I'm, tomorrow morning I'm talking at a conference at the Hilton in Wembley. He's not going to be there, Sam, I don't no, think. He's not, he's no, not, he's not no. RSVP. Yeah. But the, 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 the temptation to, to shout hello Wembley when I go on is going to mm, be... That uh, would be good. Know, do it. Yeah. Just yeah. do it. Just go. I'm wearing a dress. Just go on. And just safety. Little little yellow jacket, little white uh, trousers, yeah. and a pair of Adidas yeah. straps, and a microphone that's got no like stand no on it. Bit, and, like, and just get just go. Normal gear. Gear. Just a just a Saturday night gear for you, Sam. And yeah. See if you get it back. Yeah, normal. See normal if you stuff. get it back. Uh, <laughs> sounds good. So, what? Hang on. For like what? Uh, so that's a gig at Wembley or? It's a gig at Wembley if you just say it like that, but it's yeah. actually in the Hilton Hotel, so there's only two hundred people there, so it's not it's not as exciting. But if you say I've got a gig at Wembley, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. let's just leave it there. Mm-hmm. That sounds amazing. Well, I it? mean, factually, it's correct. It's, yeah. it's the Hilton in Wembley. Mm. It's literally next door to the it's, stadium. There you go. There we go. There you go. So, there we go. Sorted. You know? Fair play. <laughs> uh, fair play. Let's move on from this. Sam is gigging Wembley. at Wembley tomorrow. Hello, Wembley. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, They'll be wondering why Harry Hill turned up when it was Sam Avery, but there you go. What uh, what did you make of Saturday, Pedro? Sorry, for just one moment, I was picturing Sam in a room, but it, it, instead of it looking like a like a big show, it actually, because it's an hotel, looks like uh, an AA meeting. <laughs> well, a big circle. Yeah, yeah just yeah, coffee, yeah. coffee and donuts at the back. Then, know those coffee yeah. dispensers that you have to push mm. the button at the top, but you're never quite sure. You know, like that. It's that how you oh, do yeah, yeah. yeah. Coffee machines. Yeah. No wonder That's how I push played. all the buttons. If, um, I want those... That not you know those nondescript chairs that hotel or every yeah. hotel in the world yeah. has yeah, yeah. Play. Yeah. 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 yeah share and circle they'll still be good yeah, yeah. still be good so go on uh, continue 
Yeah, just start with you. Okay. An- another another home victory for Everton. Another game, another win. Five straight home wins on the run. I said to you last week, and yeah. it still rings true, the last time Everton won a home game when the opposition scored was when we beat Crystal Palace under Frank Lampard mm. in a 3-2 win. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing. No, I know. I told me mate this on the way to the match because we were just yeah. having a chat in the car and he come on and he went, I don't know whether, I don't know what's, like, yeah. what to take from that. I, yeah. Does it mean we're unbelievably good at keeping clean sheets? Or does it mean once the opposition score, we're fucked? Yeah, yeah. You know, there's somewhere in between. But five straight wins and another clean sheet. And a good way to finish the season. Beautiful. What a game as well. Oh, had me on the edge of my seat for the entire... Well, I stand up for the I'll entire I'll be honest, mate. I no, was delighted dread- with it that. Was, it was a dreadful <laughs> end of the season fair where everyone from the... Fifth minutes onwards was just waiting to go for a dip pint after the match or or whatever else they want to do, weren't they? And that's that's how end of the season should be, mm. really, shouldn't he? Well, if you're none not of this, something, yeah, none of this, holding on for dear know. life and mm. checking your watch to see what your heart rate is. No, mm. none of that nonsense. No, you know, we were standing there going, "It's a bit boring this," and going, "But this is exactly what we wanted. Mm. This is what we wanted." So. It's, listen, that's that's how you want to end the seasons. It was nice. Sheffield United played their part in it. Mm-hmm. They their fans were were their really fans good, weren't they? So fair yeah. play to them. And yeah, good good day all round. The rarity. I went to sh- went to match in a pair of shorts. Which beautiful, I, beautiful. You know, I think the last time I did it was the last game of last season. The Corey scored against Bournemouth. But so what you're saying is, in the summer, wear shorts. If it's hot, yeah, yeah, it's not hot. Today. I mean, yeah, none of it's cold. Ned's turned up in shorts today, and it's not hot, yeah. so. It isn't. Well, for, you've got shorts on, black shorts, <laughs> white socks pulled mid-calf and sliders. So, I, 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 again, I don't know what to take from that. But, um, Dave, I mean, we talked about it last week, the the fact that there was nothing on it, and that was good. Mm. That was a good thing. But it was a good opportunity for Everton to finish the season, sign off at Goodison on a high, really. I mean, it took us till the Burnley game in April to win our fourth home game of the season and we just won five on the run which shows how well we have finished the season at Goodison Park and like we said that was what was going to keep us out of any danger and ironically points wise at the minute we were safe after the Burnley game which <laughs> which was mad but um, a strong way to finish the season by Everton Yeah home. and it's, it's good to see you know it's good to see as you say in, in what has been you know a, a difficult season to put it mildly mm. uh, they have finished well and it's been good, and they've got the 40 points, and, you know, obviously with all that's gone on, with all the, the trials and tribulations and the point deductions and whatnot, yeah, it's good to see them finishing well um, and going out on a on a high. And as Ped said, you know, all of the pressure was off, and where we thought that this was going to be a must-win game, mm. you know, weeks ago, obviously, before the three on the bounce, um, you know, this 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 had everything on it. This was a this was a chance to get much needed points that were hopefully going to, you know, sort of uh, hook us over the line. Mm-hmm. Um, in total contrast to, you know, I was in the car on Saturday afternoon. I was listening to rock and roll football with Matt Ford and Matt Dyson, who are both Forest fans, and of course they were there, bloody, you know, sort of squirming around because yeah. you know Burnley had scored mm-hmm. and Luton had scored. And, you know, for them, they're like, this is literally the worst possible start <laughs> yeah. for us. You know, yeah. and I was I was thinking, you know, in any other situation, we'd have been living and breathing that yeah. exact same scenario. Absolutely. And it was just nice to to for once not be in, in their situation. Yeah. I mean, as it turned out, obviously, both of those results went the other way. Forrest are safe, albeit by some mathematical freak show, mm-hmm. um, you know, but uh, yeah, just nice to not have anything riding on it you know mm. and be 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 home and host i mean sam as dave as dave just said there the, it was such a contrast i was sat you know the lad that's sitting next to andy we, it, it somehow had a signal the weekend and it's like luton are winning and, and burnley are winning I mean, like looking at the mm. bottom three and burnley <coughs> Boris were in the bottom yeah. three and burnley yeah. were out and you're going oh my god like can both of those hang on and if they mm. would have obviously had burnley have won Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and Chelsea did go on and win, and Burnley would have only had to be Forest to stay up, and Forest would have got so. But it was nice that you could just go, oh, that's interesting yeah, at the yeah, bottom, absolutely. isn't it? <laughs> interesting, interesting from a well, it's, it's the, the 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 phrase is from a neutral's point of view, which you know we're not often neutrals in all of this sort of scrap at the bottom, but for once it is a neutral's point of view, just to hopefully enjoy the drama without being directly affected. Uh, well, I mean, I, I must admit that I was fuming that Brentford had won at the end, but. 
good. Fair play. Yeah, yeah fair play. But Sam, it was good, wasn't it, to take that they said that neutral point of view yeah. and be able to go, oh, look at that at the bottom. It's a bit interesting. Uh, yeah, Dave's spot on there. Neutral, neutral point of view is like a, it's like a sort of out of body experience for us, isn't it? <laughs> even like even mid table clashes, you you start to have think about the ramifications and mm. well, if they win that, then they don't have to win the next game, which is against Sheffield United, for example. So then they might they might take the foot off the gas or blah blah blah. Yeah, if they get yeah. through this Europa Conference game, then they're in the next game, which means their game gets pushed back to a sun. You know. Yeah. It's just your your mind's not equipped to think about all these possibilities that don't directly affect your club. But that's what we've been doing over the last, well, two or three years. Mm. I I wasn't I wasn't at the game and mm. I didn't watch the game on Saturday. Uh, I was at a, 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 someone's holy communion, so I was at a party, mm. and I thought, oh, I'll watch it afterwards. And obviously, having read the report, I thought I'm not watching all of that. So, because it just sounds terrible. So, I got match of the day on mm. and I'm scrubbing through and I'm like, oh, we're well, last on match of the day. And even that was a little, oh, that's nice, isn't it? Because this, this game no is drama. That's so yeah. inconsequential. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was so, it's just kind of enjoying that sort of mundane, beige, doesn't really matter. You know, you don't want that all the time. But after what we've mm. been through, this feels like, you know, if the end of last season was like, Ped, I know you're a big Marvel fan, big MCU fan. If the end of last season was like Endgame, the, the end of this season's felt a bit more like all all the Marvel characters just go to like a B and B and have a nice yeah breakfast. absolutely chill out absolutely. and talk about you know what they've been up to <laughs> yeah it's just been it's been dead nice there was loads of the blues at this Holy Communion on Saturday the the sun was out we were all having a few mm. pints outside everyone's checking the scores but no one's checking them every minute we're just mm. going. Like and I'd see another blue and I'd go like and these are blues who've like a couple of them had cut short at holidays last year because they wanted to get back for that Bournemouth game because mm. you had to be there, and and they were going oh I haven't checked for a while we were winning I think we're still winning I'm not mm. sure it was like oh even that was like this is the best conversation I've had in six months <laughs> so maybe that speaks more about my life than than anything really yeah. but let's not get into that right now but um <laughs> <laughs> it was great it was great to just sort of remove emotions. Mm remove tension, just remove all the kind of negativity that's been around it and just go, uh, and we won the game as well. Like yeah. a boring 1-0 win. Yeah. What a great, just great another game. boring home win, yeah. wasn't it? You know, I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just 10 a penny at the minute. Yeah. You say all that, but I would have been fuming if Sheffield tonight no, had scored. I would have been, been fuming, fuming near the end where was, we did yeah. get the second Every, every time they went into our half, I was a little bit disappointed. It was, I mean, it was a weird feeling going into the ground because... It was when I say weird feeling, just one we haven't had for a while. If I, I can honestly to be honest, say, I, w- I was just checking the Man City scores quite often because I just really, really wanted them to win, just to put to bed. Oh yeah, you just were a bit put, nervous. No, no, I wasn't nervous. I just wanted it all. I wanted it all to be put to bed. I watched the bit. No, no, I just wanted it all to be put to bed. I didn't want it to be, you know, anyone to have anything. I was trying to think though. The last time I went into Goodison so relaxed right mm. and I don't I honestly couldn't think because I think me and Zach went the Wolves game after Covid you, you'd gone at Christmas yeah, and I went to the, yeah, and I I went to the, the got the end of the season game which was Everton's last home game and it was a, it was a there was still like glimmer of European yeah. football like, and, my and, god man and you know Richarlison has got yeah. me 1-1-0 but there's only 6,000 in it wasn't quite the no. same and that, that was weird just to go back yeah, again. so it wasn't weird that being kind outdoors. of feeling and I'm trying to, yeah exactly yeah being allowed out for a bit but um, I'm trying to think of the last because if you actually think about it every other time you really go the match there's something on it, even mm-hmm. like it's so the start of the season. You want to get off to that good start, mm-hmm. so there's a pressure around yeah, it. Yeah. And I honestly can't remember the last time I walked into Goodison and was just like, This game really doesn't mean a thing. I wanted to win, mm-hmm. but it, it actually, for the first time, there's just nothing on it mm-hmm. because it is the end of the season. We can't really go anywhere. I want to win the game because you'd always want to win the game. And like you, I was near the end, I was fuming because I wanted us to put it to bed because I thought, do not, this team that gets beat every week, do not not win Everton because that was, would have been classic Everton, wouldn't it? But, um, but you know, the game itself, Everton were in total control in warm temperatures where it was a little bit walk and pace at times. But I, I was saying to again, like that, me, me and the lad, we just had a good chat about me holiday for the first fifteen minutes because he was asking me things. But without the intensity, how the other half live? You know, without the intensity, 
I think I said this in the aftermath thing. Some of Everton's biggest flaws are showing up, aren't they? In an attacking. Oh yeah, yeah. Sense, you know what I mean. Walking Within pace becomes well. It's walking pace, but there's there's no real like you. We obviously didn't have Jack Harrison, who's, who's someone who runs with the ball, but there was those moments where I was kind of looking ahead to next season, thinking, right, we really do need. A, B, and C. I was looking at going, how many of these players will still play for no, Evan no. next season? But you like, know what I'm saying. Without yeah. that intensity, yeah. you could see like the, the big holes yeah, in, yeah. in the squad as well, couldn't you? In the team, I thought. So. Yeah, but I, I'll be honest. I don't know what the lads think. It's just hard to gauge anything out of a game like that when mm. it means absolutely nothing to, yeah, to the player. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be honest, like the lap of the, the lap of honour, lap of appreciation, as they call it now. All I was just trying to get a like a, a look at people's body language just to see if I could mm. see if it, what anyone's body language like. If anyone was waving, waving well, to Andre us. Andre Gomez was waving. But Andre no. Gomez didn't know what week it was. Let's be honest. After he got smashed in the face, no, but he was waving. No, he was. He was literally the only one, and he literally put on his. No, but he was the only one you could tell that that was his last game. Yeah. The rest you didn't know. Jared Blantwaite looked like. He didn't know what he, what was going on in in like in terms of his future. He was he just won't, will he? no, I know what I'm saying. He's just like he wasn't. Like, he was just like clapping people in the Gladys Sea Baton. Was singing his name, like giving him a big thing, and ev- it was just really. And sometimes you get a feel for if a player is no, leaving yeah, or not. Yeah. And that, that that got me to thinking. Like genuinely, those players probably have no clue no. whether they're staying or going. Mm-hmm. Or, like most of them probably don't. They all probably they're not stupid. They obviously all know the situation at the football club. But all of them probably sit there, are probably thinking, I have no idea whether I'm going to be here next year, mm. but I can't really show that or or whatever because I'm it's I'm a professional, I've got a job to do. So it was a very sort of strange, it's just a strange, weird feeling just to seeing them thinking, how many of you are going to be here next season? Because mm. you could, you, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're all not going to be there, but you could certainly say any three mightn't be here Hopefully next there, season. Yeah, and yeah. that's... That's that's really worrying, isn't it? Like from that point of view, just thinking some of those players who have done well in the obviously at times this season might not be at Everton players. Some of our best players might not be Everton players next season. I'll we'll come back onto that in the sec, but we it was it was funny because that first the first half, like or well, certainly the first half of the first half, if that makes sense. Obviously, obviously at the like the core, I missed that. You know, guilt edged opportunity. Dom after Dominic Calvert Lewin had mm. done brilliantly, done tremendous and put on a play for him. But he hardly touched the ball. So like there's a conversation going on around me of like the core he's just like what do, you know, what does he do if he's not in the game? And then obviously the next minute Dom crosses mm. in, he heads it in, it's like that's what he does. Um, you know, it, it was it was actually a really good goal. Everton's goal. You know, Dom starts off with a, a lovely chest pass by Dominic Calvert Lewin after Pickford's ball forward and ends with the core heading it in. But when you look at that, Dave, I mean, Everton will be trying to plot how to go forward. I know it's, mm. it's difficult to do it, mm. but the core he is a little bit of a head scratcher, isn't he? Because that's his first goal since December. Yeah. He was really influential in the first half of the season. He's come back from an injury. And for me, he's just been a... He just hasn't got going at all this second half of the season. I actually think he's better deeper than than where he is. Mm, um, mm. But he did show that that's what he's that's what he is good at, getting on the end of things, isn't he? he Fan, is, you know? yeah. And, you know, listen, he's he scored some important goals. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, I did I did think in, in, in... Well, both of those instances that you're talking about, mm. I did kind of think, surely this is the wrong way around, though. You know, with <laughs> yeah. Dom, Dom going out wide. Mm. You know, he's a centre forward. He's going out wide, supplying it into Decore, who's there sort of, you know, right in the middle of the box. So, mm. um, yeah, listen, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who's there as long as it goes in. But yeah. I did sort of think that that it was a, a sort of strange sort of positioning for, for Dom to be in. Um, but... <laughs> I'd still, I'd if the if your question is, you know, would we still have Decore? The answer mm-hmm. for me is yes. Yeah. At this moment in time, for yeah, sure. yeah, definitely. You know, I'm not looking to offload him if if that's sort mm-hmm. of what you were thinking. No, no, um, no. I just mean looking at other positions because obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. we we still, and I think the manager found this. We've lost them in both of Sean Dyche's season like you know periods yeah. that he's been at Everton he's been at Everton for 18 months now and in the both seasons we've lost that the like Corey for a, mm. a period of time and we haven't been able to figure out a way how to replace him um 
because both periods he was out, Everton basically didn't win a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and obviously, we, we've we got to find someone else to, to play that role as well. And he is, of course, 31 as well. So mm-hmm. Everton have got to find someone who can do that role as well. Because I like I said, I think when he even drops back and plays centre mid, I think he's I actually think sometimes he's more in the game because of yeah. he can get around the pitch and he's quite rangy. But he, he showed there that in a team that doesn't really score goals, He's got seven, you know, he's the top scorer with Dominic Calvert-Loon, hence why you're saying he is still he is still important to the Everton side. I think so, you know, and they, they describe him, you know, again, to coin the cliche about being a box-to-box midfielder. Mm-hmm. And, and when he's on his game, he is, he's, mm-hmm. he's you know, he's dis- he's displayed that on numerous occasions and just yeah. the energy and the legs and literally back and forth and back and forth and then actually still turning up in the right place, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but... Um, yeah, listen, he's he's we've we've not seen the best of him of late. Obviously, coming back from the injury, but um, yeah, I I still think that in terms of what we have and what we don't have, um, yeah, I don't want to see him go anywhere anytime no. soon for me, just at the moment. But yeah, I mean, Sam as Pets just said there, it is a weird situation, isn't it? Where we've got to the end of the season, you know, we've got a game left at the weekend, uh, which is going to be a hugely significant game, not for us, thankfully. Mm. Um, but we're in a position where, like Ped said, we could any of us really say who's who's gonna be in Everton's team when we kick off in August again? Because the club, like even this week, even since we recorded when we did record on Thursday last mm. week, yeah, there's there's been more ownership. You know, triple seven were mm. apparently done on Friday, but the reality is they're not done, and we're not gonna know if they're they done. Are done. Okay, they're right now, done. right now they're not done. They are done. Okay, right now factually they're not done at time of recording, and yet we don't know who's waiting to come in. There's a lot to talk about three or four. So without whoever it may be, has to get in quickly so that some of these players futures can be decided. You know, we've got the Eng- we've got stories about the England goalkeeper. He's had another clean sheet at the weekend. Mm-hmm. With Jared Brantley, as Ped's already mentioned, there's a lot of suitors for him, but. Tarkovsky's the only one that I put money on at the minute. Yeah, exactly. He's, you, you know, seriously, when you look at it, you know, the one that you you sort of go, who is definitely going to start, for me anyway, you know, who's mm-hmm. definitely going to sort of start in August? Tarkovsky. The rest of them, <laughs> the doubts over all of them. I mean, Sam Dominic Calvert-Lewin, you know, he's, he's finished the season in good form, created the goal again at the weekend. And yet the stories about him on Saturday and Sunday, that, you know, he's, he's thinking of moving on. And you're going... Well, so we might lose our number nine as well. <laughs> you know, it is. It, it it something needs needs clearing up ASAP, Sam, doesn't it? Really, it's de- it's dead weird, isn't it? It's dead weird at the moment. I think Dave's spot on it. It is Tarkowski. He's probably one of the f- one of the few we can nail on. He's put, mm. which probably means he's going to leave in it. Yeah, like, cue, a bit, <laughs> cue a bit from <laughs> someone uh, to go. free to Wigan or somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you mentioned Dom Baz mm. because, the, like, it, Dom's such a. It, I think when the history books are written about Dominic calvert Lewin, we'll look back at it, and he's, he's such a unique, or he's played a unique role as a striker because he's he's had moments when he's been like it, you know the last few weeks you know look at the Merseyside derby performance he just bullied their defence and it was mm. wonderful to see proper yeah. traditional Everton centre forward play and even on on uh, on Saturday didn't get on the score sheet but his, his hold up play and it's it's just those two chances he created for decor he was just. He, he just contributes a lot to the team when yeah. he's on fire and when he wants it and when he's feeling fit and he's, he's confident. Not, he's, I think he's, he's, he's a real confidence yeah. player as well. Definitely. He definitely looks confident in his own player. body, doesn't he now? He does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I thought that just looking at the highlights from, from Saturday and yeah, he does. He looks confident, you know, and there's been much of the season where he hasn't for me. Yeah. Because he's so strong when he's confident. He's so strong and he's so... He's just powerful. He's able to just mm. use his body in the right way, and he knows how to kind of lean into people. And mm. you know, even the way he took the penalty at Luton last last week, you know, he looked strong and powerful, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And just even like the celebrations, it's not like oh my god, I've scored. It's like yeah, that was that mm. was always going in. Mm-hmm. So little things like that, and you, you you think if you could just get more of that from him, and unfortunately, that's a conversation we've had a lot about Dom. If we could just get that consistently through a season. And whether that is a kind of injury thing that he's carrying or whether it's a confidence thing upstairs. But either way, it'd be 
you know, certainly as he's finished the season so strongly, it'd be really sad if he was one of the players that that left. Because I think as fans, we can look at that team. If you look at that whole squad and you think, right, which ones, almost like a guess who board, which ones <laughs> do you want to put down and just bin off? There's there's several where you think, well, you've not really contributed. There's a couple on loan who mm-hmm. are going to go go back anyway so they, they can get down. But then there's some, the spine of the squad, obviously Pickford, centre halves. To Dom again, Decoria is one of those. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how effective he he, he will be again in the future. But um, it's it's roll the dice at the moment, and we don't know. Mm. We don't know who's going to be there. And with most squads, as you reach the end of the season, you go, well, they're obviously on the way. They're signing a new deal, but because it's everything's the future's uncertain, and yeah. the end is always near, as the great Jim Morrison once said. I mean, Dominic Alvaloon, Paddy, it, it, it's. This is the first real season that he's he's had for about three where he's played most. You know, mm-hmm. he came back at Villa and, and got a cheekbone injury. Other than that, in general, there's been a, the odd game where we haven't had him because the manager's gone, he's felt something and we're resting him here. It's not been too many and, and people shouldn't look back at that because a lot of players miss games mm-hmm. in the season, don't they? I, I think, I don't, I don't even think because he's had the full season practically that he's obviously been at his best all season. I just think in the last, I think in the last six to eight weeks, you've seen a player who who is willing. You know, he knew he knows Have when he stepped up when we needed. Him. But no, I, I don't think it's just that. I think the likes of the Chelsea game, he knows when he needs to not play now. Mm. So that's his, that, you know, that's his, that's him listening to his own body. Yeah. Um. But I think just trusting trusting your own body. And I think that's become so apparent recently. I look at it like just now when he jumps, when he jumps and how much like you know hang time he gets, stuff like that. I think you've seen come on leaps and bounds in the last six weeks. Mm. And again, I think that's trusting going out the two those two moments on Saturday, sprinting behind the back line, um, and not being afraid of pulling something. I think that's changed recently. Mm. I think we've seen a, a, just a player who's got the confidence now in his own body and. Um, the worry is, I mean, obviously he's only got a year left on his contract. Have Everton offered him a new contract? Has he? Would he take a new contract if he doesn't? We're probably going to have to sell him, and that's the sad thing is that we could be getting a Dom Calvert-Lewin coming back into his prime at the peak of his career, and he might even be an Everton player. And and you know you can't really hold that against him either because that is just the situation that we found we find ourselves in we and it's the same for a lot of players isn't it i wouldn't hold it against anyone who they, if if they leave the club this summer because some of them will be getting pushed towards the door mm. so and there'll be there'll be you know a lot of players in that situation where if a good a good bid comes in for them good offer comes in for them we probably can't say it, it down it's mad cuz he was one i was looking at because he was a little bit away from the pack. He was with his partner and obviously the baby mm-hmm. um, coming towards us. So he, he was one I give extra clapping to. Uh, or exaggerate a clapping. Okay, to make sure he, was, he knew he was appreciated. Because mm-hmm. uh, you, you, you're right. You do look at some of them and go, like, what, like Coleman was one who everyone was looking at, obviously. There was a lot mm-hmm. of talk. And, and I know Sean Dyche basically let it, you know, told the media on Thursday. Um, that Coleman's, you know, basically being offered a new deal. Uh, and then obviously them stories. One then, year, isn't it? It's just yeah. the next year. I mean, Seamus' interview afterwards is like, I'm going to have a think and then I'll decide. But I I, I don't see him walking away this summer. Um, I mean, what, what do you think of, let me ask you this, Dave, about Ashley Young? Because Ped said recently that uh, he's probably the best sign in Everton have made. No, no. Mm. Ped said recently, so. that, recently that, you know, we, he wants him to stay. I think he had a good game again at the mm. weekend. I think I don't I don't think it was dead weird because he come in, everyone was like, All right, I, I kinda get it. And then he got in the side. And then I think once he became almost a first choice, some cracks appeared a yeah. little bit. It was hard for him mm. to keep going. And then people do that thing where because we're not winning he then becomes the big issue, even though there was a few issues. And But I think as he's been out the side and back in and out mm. like that, I think he's finished the season really well. He still looks he still looks fitter than, than a lot of our players as well. Uh, he obviously can't raid up and down the line anymore, which you wouldn't expect. But as a squad player, would he be someone you'd be happy to see, even though he is obviously 38, going to be 39? 
Uh, it's not exactly what you want for Everton, but is he someone that you wouldn't be massively against staying for another season if he was... Or are you looking and thinking he's taking a wage where we could potentially get a younger person in who, who might develop into a first-team player? How are you looking at that one? I think for me, for now, um, and you can make a, a case for both, but I just think that his experience and his versatility, and his versatility is important for me because, mm. you know, he can he can play in a few different positions. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important. I think he gives us good cover mm. in a number of different positions on the pitch. Um, and for that reason alone, much as, you know, and as I say, I could I, I, I could make an argument in terms of the fact that, as you say, he's taking a wage that could be better, you know, especially when we're talking about very limited resources, mm. better used for a younger player and somebody who's actually got more of a future with the club. But I just think at the moment in terms of, you know, we have to be careful and really prioritize what we what we have. And especially with so much uncertainty over so many other key players as we were discussing before mm. and Sam, as you said, in terms of the spine and, you know, uh, who is going to be in that spine, you know, and obviously the spine is arguably the most important, what well, is the most important part. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd keep, I'd, I'd, I'd keep Ashley Young for another, another 12 months personally, mm. if that was an option. Yeah. And we, the, and we don't know what he wants to do, do we? we well, exactly. He, he exactly. might be thinking, that's it, I'm, I'm done. I mean, I don't yeah. know, because he seems, he still seems mm. to be enjoying it and he still seems to be Absolutely. able to cope. But it, it is like, going if, to... If, if on. Ashley Young was a biscuit, he'd be a digestive, wouldn't oh, he? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You'd, never, yeah. you'd never pick him, but you'd have one and you go, these are really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, I'll have another one. So I agree. I'm not a one-dip, are they? Digestives. A, no. Ashley isn't, doesn't seem to be a one-dip kind of thing. No, I, I, think, I think he's more like shortbread. Do you? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Brother, what you'd only bring him out to Christmas. Yeah. He's 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 okay. he's he doesn't break easy. No. And you get multiple dips out of him. But he mm. mightn't be everyone's favourite. You know, he's not he's not the one you're all rushing to. He's not the one the kids are getting from the box straight out way, are they? Mm. But the the people who appreciate a good biscuit are, are letting the kids jump in, get mm. all the Kit Kats, get all it's the breakaways, bad. get all whatever, whatever's fancy that day. Mm. And the R ones at the time as are just coming in, getting the short bread and going, This'll last me a, a while. This'll last me this'll a li- last me a while. Well, I don't, I don't disagree with the shortbread analogy. I, mm. I just think the digestive and the versatility. Because mm. the digestive, you can dunk, as Baz says. You, you can, can have cheese. You, you can't can outdunk it. it. Sorry, you can't you outdunk can, a shortbread. You can even with digestives, you can even give them out on, on midnight also, if you haven't got anything else in. But you will oh, get eggs as well. Because also, though, mate. And again, I, I'm, I'm going to put you. Don't, your, and Sam, sorry, don't forget digestives are used. No, in, no, but uh, I, cheesecakes as but well. But also, though, I'm going to. I'm, mm, mm. Mm. I'm going to destroy Sam's argument here. I don't know where... No, no, I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy it. You can't fit a digestive into a cup of tea. But a sh- yeah, no, you can't. Because it can't. It can't. it's the rim. It wouldn't no, the... no, hey, no, no, no. Hey. A shortbread. Listen, hang on, hang on. Hear me out. A shortbread. It fits any hole. It fits <laughs> any hole. I mean, pl- very much. No, 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 but it could be called a short net. Right? Mm. I don't know. Mm. Fits or net hole. bread. Net so bread for... Therefore, he can just fit into wherever he's asked to go. He mm. can dunk in any place he's asked to. Yeah. She. Exactly. I, no, no, I'm talking about yeah. Ashley Young being a oh, I thought short breath. Short what are you talking about? I thought you were What's talking about going on here? Breath. We don't have to get all, you know, PC or whatever. Um, he can just, he just fits in any cup any he's, he's put into. Where there's a digestive, you're hitting the rim. So you've got to break Not off always. that. No, no, you are, though. Do you, unless the I'm going to buy you a big mug. Yeah, Ted, you need a big sports direct mug. mug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need a big sports direct mug. Whereas he's a digestive, he's long lasting. I mean, sure, Brett. Yeah, whatever. What did I just well, say? You're, like, you're back and Sam's No, I'm not. Sam's wrong. But you, you've just said no, he's a digestive. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a shortbread. Short he's a shortbread. He'll last long. Uh, you know, and, and listen, when you have one, you, f- you realise how good they are. Value for money. Mm, exactly, yeah. That's what you're saying. I'm saying that as well. And also, the tin shortbread coming, always, always uh, useful, useful for, for other something. Things. Exactly. Mm. Always mm. useful for other things. Yeah, yeah. I don't mm. know how I fit that in with Ashley Young, but yeah. I've, I've, I feel like Fair I've play. trumped I've trumped his <laughs> arguments. You've gone full Donald. Fair play. Fair play. Um, the man, I don't think we Other can... biscuits are available. They yeah. are. But they're not as good. Hmm. You could probably have a whole conversation about which player is which biscuit in the squad. Mm. 
Yeah. And, because, uh, to be honest, at the end of this, sounds season, like a close uh, season feature, that yeah. sound, doesn't it? Yeah, certainly, let's yeah. put a pin in it for now, Dave. Yeah. yeah. I feel like when all the squads being refreshed for the start of the season, uh, it will be like the biscuit tin at Christmas mm. when all the good ones have left, and you're just left with the stuff that nobody else wants, mm. which will be the Everton squad, mm. the quality street box at the end, all the you coffee. Don't know, that... though, do you? Because it depends, again, it depends what they do. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. we're expecting people to go up to... Well, we've been told by the director of football that people have been sold. Yeah. Uh, that was sold on Saturday morning, which is a nice one for people to pick up. But um, mm-hmm. it is one. Motivational. It is. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Mm-hmm. Telling all your competitors that you've yeah, got to sell. Yeah. Is, I'm waiting for Kevin Thelwell to talk about stuff like that and then say, and climate change is getting worse. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll mm-hmm. the game today, yeah. you know, it's yeah. good. But can you imagine them on the way out the tunnel, couldn't you? Patting them all on the back going, have a good game today, lads. You're in the shop window. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. The scouts <laughs> from everywhere. In the jungle, it could be you. <laughs> yeah, it that's could be you. Yeah. It could be you. <laughs> Lewis Warrington, have a good game. Mm. It's your last. <laughs> Good to see Lewis Warrington get on the pitch, to be fair, Evertonian. Season ticket holder in the street yeah. end for a long time. His brother, his dad, big mad blue, so it was good to see it him was. get on for it. He's, he's I mean, got, Andre Gomez. He's got his place in the Masters League, hasn't kind he? Kind of, yeah. Uh, Andre Gomez, it kind of summed up his Everton career, didn't it? Really coming on and getting injured and having to go off mm. as a sub. But, um, him. And he did, <laughs> say, he did say his goodbyes with the wave. Um the manager's done well, though, hasn't he? I suppose we, we should finish with that. I don't, I don't I you suppose. say the manager's done well, I suppose. No, I suppose we should finish no, no, with the well, word on we'll, him. We'll clip it there. We'll clip it there, Shut see? Up. We'll put that out. We're, we're, we're finishing on that note, saying that the manager has done well. Because, obviously, we did need, we keep talking about needing them. The home form is dreadful. Yeah. It's absolutely dreadful. But he's, he's done really well to pick that back up. And, and we have ended, we've ended on a high, haven't we? Really? I am incredibly high. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I'm wait. No, no. I is 16th. No. Mm. Well, here's, I mean, go on. Here's, go on. Here's, here's, here's one for you, Ped. And I was go thinking on. about this last week in terms of, you know, where we find ourselves finishing mm. the season is in a, in a far happier and, and cheery place than we were. Ped sounds not like that, it, doesn't it? Not that long ago. Mm. And if you rewind back mm. to the kind of the depths of despair before the big great escape. Yeah. And, and I remember you saying with regards to to Dyche, is that you weren't you weren't convinced and no. actually you, you take Moyes mm. all day long. Now interestingly, and this is the point I'm getting to, is that Moyes is now obviously available. And we have and and it's it feels now like Dyche has finished so well mm. that it has then either confused people or changed <laughs> people's opinions completely, whereby they kind of go, do you know what? Mm. No, we have to kick off next season with him. But in terms of, I'm just curious from your perspective, you know, having said a few weeks yeah. ago, you take Moyes. Mm. Is it, where is your head thinking now? Is it, is it a close decision? Are you a hundred percent with Daesh? Uh, would you still entertain the idea of Moyes? Discuss. Um, thank you for bringing that up, Dave. Um, no, you know what? I, I think it's interesting, though, isn't it? No, no it I'm not is. Kind of no, I know you're not. It's, I know it's you're an not. Interesting no, kind of like change around no, the fortunes. Is. I th- I and think... it ultimately, it's a positive thing because of what the manager and the team have done. But it does pose a question. No, they've done. No, they've done. They've done brilliantly since Chelsea, and I really do think. I really do think Chelsea was. A was, was yeah. There was like a. There was like something changed at, for mm. everyone at the Chelsea game, and I and I feel like the manager, obviously had to make a change in whatever way. And I don't think it's a change that we've seen. Obviously, the only sort of change we've seen is like the tracksuit. But obviously, I feel like something more has happened, but it's hard to know what that more is. And I've said this before, and I've said this to people who who know him, who tell me how great he is, um, is that I just want Daesh, or I've wanted Daesh, to just be a little bit more connected to Mm -hmm. the club. Mm-hmm. And I feel like maybe that's what he's realised is that you, mm-hmm. I I I seen a little piece he did on um, on match of the uh, sorry on football focus with um, with uh, Clem is it on on mm-hmm. and I thought it was a really good piece because mm-hmm. he basically said 
He said, how are you getting on with the fans? And he went, well, some of them still, it goes up and down. Some of them still want me out. Some of them still want me. It goes yeah. game by game. And I thought, you do look on Twitter or you do, you mm. do watch this show. And mm. I thought, fair play. I thought, you know, that's that's a good way to be. But I've always said, I just want him to be a little bit more connected. He, you know, he always he's always like applauding and appreciating and saying nice things about the fans. But I just want him to be a little bit more connected. Um and I feel like that's being there, and I think the tracksuit was almost like a symbolising that actually wearing the badge and those kind of things. So I think, I, listen, I did want Moise. I, I thought that was the right place to go. I just, with everything going on, I think Sean Dyche obviously has to remain the manager of Everton Football Club because he is an adult in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, he is a grown up when we need him, when we need mm-hmm. one most. And a lot, as a lot of people said, he's been, a, he's at that constant unwavering uh, emotion which is just stay steady let everybody else lose their heads but I'm not going to lose my head and I think that's the perfect thing we need for this football club right now so is that also the same viewpoint though just to just to just to twist it again mm, go on, is twist it the it. same viewpoint in terms of when you look at it over a long term period of time and by that I mean that you know we're talking about a big turnaround in, mm. in performance and, and results and and ultimately opinion yeah. as fans to the manager because of the way that you know he and he's done a brilliant job and I'm I'm not I'm 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 not trying to sort of stiff him. I'm just sort of playing devil's advocate. No no but if you then look at it on a long term situation because there's obviously qualities that Moyes has that we all appreciate, right. you know, and and so what I'm saying is yeah. that rather than looking at it over a period of three or four weeks, yeah. when you look at it over this time next year or even mm. in two years' time or or whatever, you know, who's who's the man? Who's the man, for example, that you want to see leading us into the yeah. new round? Oh, ultimately, Dave, right? If you were to give me, if ever, if if someone become available right now, mm. who was a a manager who was a cut above. I'd sack Sean Dyche in a heartbeat. I wouldn't have any issues with it at all. Mm. I'd sack him in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Even, even if Jürgen Klopp turned around and said, I want to be Everton manager, I'd give the job to Jürgen Klopp. Mm. No issue saying that. Top quality. If there's a top quality manager out there, I'd give him it. I also think David Moyes, no issue saying this, is a is a much better manager than Sean Dyche. I think he's mm-hmm. proved it. Mm-hmm. But I, don't, I, I just think that the situation at this football club is so... We've just been sitting here talking about it. Players, who's coming, who's going, yeah. who's doing what. I think if you, I think realist. I mean, obviously, we spoke. But we speak with a lot of emotion. But if you take the emotion away from it and think, with all that's going on at this football club, could we change one other thing with it mm. being the manager? I, I think yeah. that would. I think that for me now would be a no. I think that would be. Yeah, it'd be silly because the play, mm-hmm. the players that are here, the manager knows, and he seems to know how to get the best out of most of them. And so, yeah, if a top quality manager come along, I'd take them, take him, sack him all day. Sean Dyche, Sean Dyche. For the record, sorry, I, I agree with you. By the way, for the record, mm-hmm. I'm just curious to kind of you know chat yeah, it through. Yeah. It's, it's there's so many hypotheticals, isn't it? Because we're not kind of fully aware of what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you never mm-hmm. are, but especially when things are bad, it's really difficult to get a read on on what he's dealing with back backstage, as it were. Mm. But I think Sean Dyche is probably fortunate in a way in that Everton were in the mess that they are when he went 15 games without a win. Because in other circumstances, if a the club was in a good situation, or b we hadn't sacked the manager every five minutes in the in the previous six years before he arrived. He might have been out the door if the and, mm-hmm. and if Moyes oh, was available. He would, have been. He, would have been. he probably would have been out the door, and, and Moyes would be in now. But that that Chelsea game, it I mean, it, it's almost like it, it was like a metamorphosis, and it had to happen. And I think yeah. there's so many opportunities, and this is a little bit cliche, a little bit wanky, but like when you fail massively, mm. there's so many le- learning opportunities, isn't there? And like mm. I think professionally, we've all I know some of my biggest developments in comedy have come when I've just eaten. Who on stage and not not literally? That's that a weird a, that actor. That'd be a yeah. that one, very niche. That happened once. And it, yeah, it didn't go down. Welcome well. to Saint Helens. Um, <laughs> but then you, because then you you question everything. You go, well, what mm. didn't work? Why was I doing that? And yeah. if everything has just capitulated completely. You've got to rethink and build from the start again, and that's where you can then create new approaches. So I think that was a that was a really important moment in our season. That defeat, as weird as it sounds now, because of what we've seen after mm. it, but. It's um I, I think we'll only really know the job that he's done 
in 20 years' time when someone writes some kind of expose about all the backstage shenanigans and what's gone on because it's just, we I, I don't think any of us know exactly what's going on. Mm. That'll be in his box. What about you, Baz? With, with what? With Daesh. Now? Now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I'd... Listen, do any manager that doesn't win in 14 should be would be gone and should be sacked. And if he goes another 14 without winning, then he should be sacked. End of story. There's no there's no caveat to that. It's a third of your season. Mm. You can't win a game of football in the third of your season. You don't deserve to stay the manager. This year's been absolutely mm. crazy. The ownership, the points deductions. The fact, though, all be, that being said, the fact that he has been able to dust everybody down after that Chelsea game and get them going again mm. in the manner means that yeah he deserves he deserves to carry on. Mm. Um we have to get to a place where I just think it's really difficult to to make a change when there's so much uncertainty, uncertainty at the top. I just don't because even if you just broke it down to the basics, who's mm. who's gonna decide to get rid of them and who's mm. gonna decide to employ someone else? And, well, could, yeah. And, yeah. And, and who's going to come in? You know, David Moyes might, because he might go, OK, I accept the club's in a mess, yeah. but I'm an Everton man, because he, yeah. he always says it. Mm. Uh, I'm out of a job, so I haven't mm. got to leave a job now. Mm. And I know Goodison, I know the fans, and I'm, I, can, I, I can do the job. David mm. Moyes probably would be the only one, I imagine, unless you're taking a big gamble on someone like a Wayne Rooney or whatever, and are you really going to put... Mm. Wayne Rooney in this position at the moment where there's so much instability and he needs to he needs to get himself back in the game and doing well. Mm. I think any other manager who is experienced or any other manager who's a, a hot shot manager or someone with a big reputation is going to look at Everton right now and go, are you messing? Like, mm. I, I don't know what players I've got. I don't know mm-hmm. whether the, the football club's going to exist in three months. Mm. Uh, you know, because right now, that's what it's like. So, I think it, the manager position at the moment won't be up for debate. Um, he might have, someone might come in and offer him a job and he might have a decision to make. Who knows? But I think just right now, I think the mm-hmm. the biggest thing, the biggest fire that needs putting out to Goodison Park is the ownership. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once mm-hmm. that's in place and then you get some direction, then you can start looking around. But I'm with you, the same with players. Mm-hmm. Talking about Dominic Calvert-Lewin, but if if someone come, you know, the centre forward came available, who's better than Dom, we should absolutely go and get him and sell Dom. If there's a better goalie than Jordan Pickford, then mm. you can get go and sell Jordan Pickford because that's how your football club improves. Yeah, yeah. Can't mm. be, sentiments, I think, is leaving football more than it's ever done now because players are moving around more frequently yeah. and because of the money. We're now talking about keeping a player for a year or two years and then selling them. Therefore, you're never going to mm. really get it, in my opinion. We're not going to get another Seamus Coleman. Mm. Just the way football. It is interesting though, isn't it? Just on dice that Iriola has been nominated for manager of the year. And it, and as we talk now, God Bournemouth nice. have got exactly the same points as oh. well of what we've earned this year. Yeah. And without all those problems. And it's mad. It's Everton have won more games than Bournemouth, I think. It's, no, they've got, a, they've got identical well, records. They've only won more games than no, no, it's Identical records. It? Sorry, won more than Brighton. So been. we've got... so. How does that work, though? How do you get to that point where Iriola, Iri, I mean, you know, whatever your view is on Sean Dyche, how do you get to that point where Iriola gets nominated? Why? Because it's his first year in the Premier League. Because he lost I mean, the first. They didn't win an eight, did they? But oh, no, well, that doesn't make you... It <laughs> shouldn't make you... He was there for no, those no, eight. No, I'm offering... Isn't that weird, though? That, that I'm offering up reasons why they might No, but it, isn't that weird, yeah. though? We've had two points deductions, mm-hmm. and, and yet he's being nominated and Dyche isn't. And, mm-hmm. and that's that... Things like that are just weird, aren't they? I don't get, I don't mm-hmm. get that whatsoever. Isn't it? Well, no, but it's perception, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It is perception, isn't it? Sean Dyche is this type of manager mm. and Ari Iriola's. Yeah, very strange, that. Very strange. I'm quite happy, though, with, like, any of our successes, albeit minor, just to go under the radar. Like, Mm. because there's a big debate about Branthwaite at the moment, and I I saw a load of arguments on Twitter last week about, Mm. you know, what he's worth, and Everton fans saying he's worth this, and Man U fans saying he's not worth that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking... Let's just play it down, lads. Let's see. Yeah, he's been, <laughs> mm. been crap, to be honest. That's why, That's why you know, he's in the team every week and, and he's kept all these clean sheets because it's just, yeah, let's just keep things on the low down until mm. we can 
you know, because it'd be horrible, wouldn't it? It's uh, and because he's obviously going to be one of the names on the list that uh, that might leave to just watch another truly great player leave for less yeah. value than the worth. I don't mind if we get what the worth mm. and we reinvest it, but you know, just as we've seen, like with Charles and Anthony Gordon, as they've walked out the club, and you just think we probably could have got squeezed them for a little bit more if we were in this position. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with Dice not being on that list. Mm. Mad. Oh yeah. Uh, I want to finish with this because it's just a mad story that I've seen that was sent to me before. Um, Romanian club Dynamo Bucharest is conducting an investigation into allegations that defender Edgar Lee may have had his twin brother Edelino playing his place his place <laughs> for approximately five games this season. Wow. <laughs> so do you reckon he's just like, oh, you know what? could do with just having a little break here. I'm a bit tired. Um, saves on the legs, doesn't it? You know, save the legs. But is it, or has he just gone, listen, you know, me and my girlfriend want to go away for a few weeks and I've uh, seen this cracking deal that I can't get it any other time. The kids aren't, aren't off school. It's a bit mm. quieter. So do us a favour, will you just turn up and play for me for five games and his brother's gone, can, yeah, all right. Can we investigate whether Andre Gomez did that? Because he was amazing when he first came to us mm. and then his twin started playing and was really poor. Well, I was going to say, you could probably say that for quite a few of our players. Say, there a few? There's definitely a few. few would be that it, without, you know, Just Michael a, Keane. With a bit of one. fun. A bit of fun. Michael Keane for one. Well, like, well, yeah, where, where's 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 the other like, Michael Like, there was Keane a Michael gone. Keane at one yeah, time yeah. who played for England, let's not forget, and, and did quite well for Everton. And then is this Michael or Matthew Keane playing today? Which one is he? It is because he's got pigtails. This one mm. and the other one hasn't. So, so there's quite a few. There is, it, been... it is mad, isn't it? That's someone you know that that could actually be a real thing. His twin mm. brother's gone and played. Fair play. Than... Fair play. It's Fair play. Like you know. WWE stuff, that isn't it? Yeah. Like you roll under the ring. Yeah. The twin comes out, delivers the final blow. And but even if even if DNA tests wouldn't sort that out, would it? Not I think sure. I think we all have different DNA. Do we? Even twins? Yeah, even twins. Otherwise, I don't know. I mean, listen, listen. I'll, be, I'll hold my hands up. I'm not a scientist. I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say you'd be shite on Silent Witness. Yeah, I'm not a scientist. What? I don't profess to be. But <laughs> yeah. I thought that I thought maybe twins had the same DNA or very what similar the, DNA. You know, that's I a bit know. of a bit of a mad thing. Mm. No, we've got to check your DNA to make sure it's you. Mm. But have they got a copy of his DNA in the first place? Which I, one would they say is which? I, I'm sure they'll have his blood on on file. Could it's you make that a really system. good signing, though? If you sign, like, instead of signing Ashley Young, we've signed the Young Twins. Mm. We've got two of them. <laughs> two of them. Well, United, United tried it, didn't he? With Fabio and, mm. and Rafa, or whatever his name is, the other one, didn't he? Were they twins? They were the twins. Yeah. They played on both oh. fullback positions, mm. didn't he? Oh, right. Mm. But, it, but I wonder if he... But they were on the pitch at the same time. They we were, all knew that yeah, they were twins. Yeah, that, was, yeah. that was a difference. That'd be good, though, wouldn't it? Everton mm. announced double signing, but it's just twins. We, mm. if, if we, should, of, we, should, we should invest in more twins. Yeah, yeah I think so. Because if one of them the got Siamese, sus- if one of them got gold. suspended, uh, but one was better than the other, you just played the one who was suspended. Mm. He's the best one. Just yeah. oh, you only have to swap a shirt. Mm. How is anyone ever going to know? I think clubs are missing the trick. I think they are. I think Dynamo double bubble. Why are they? Why are they investigating it? Mm. I didn't imagine. I, imagine a Siamese striker as well. Two good feet. Two heads. Yeah. Two good heads. <laughs> You know, I mean, but seriously, you got more chance. But seriously, Dave just said, but seriously. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's offside, but a bit yeah. of a miss. Which, absolutely, mm. you know, mm. is, is is that head affecting play? Is he passive or not? You know, when the ball's coming over, you've always got one head that's facing the right way, you know, for different side corners. They often say two heads are better than one, don't they? Absolutely. There's a mm. lot to be said for that. VAR would pass- struggle with that at the moment, though. Where Will would you, you put the case yeah. at? Can you mm. be offside if you've passed to yourself? I'm not sure you can. I don't know what the rules are. It's a grey area. It needs investigating. It's very grey area, isn't a it? Grey it area. Mm. Maybe you need. To I'm, have I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words. This is I, this is another close season feature. I'm lost for words. I think so. I, I think I think we're going. Very July this. Well, if it is, but I just thought it, it was worth bringing up because it's an interesting. I'm still. I'm, I'll be honest. I'm still rocking from the the news that Dave isn't a scientist. I'm not uh, yeah. a scientist. Well, never I'm have still, been. Still, still, I know. I've been. Pulled here under false pretenses. I thought this was a science, Dave. I thought this was a health checkup. 
It's going. <laughs> Dave yeah. said he about, wants to put his then. finger somewhere. So no, I... that was you with the two fingers yeah, in the were, coffee. You, would, you, you were started. also talking about you. you I mean, listen, lest, lest we forget, this was also the episode of this, you know, potentially award-winning podcast mm, series. Potential. Where you said that shortbread can go in any hole. You did. Right? It can. Did. And, and we, we, we can't unhear that. No. We can, it no. can't. <laughs> that, it mean... fills any box. Mm. Well, that, that, that's not even any better, is it? No, really. I'd like to promo campaign that. I mean, it fills any box. But they're in tins as well. this Christmas. <laughs> it, fills it fills any, any box. Hole. Your tit. Get that on a t-shirt. <laughs> but it's, the, it's in its DNA. Mm. But don't ask Dave Vitti. It's because he he's not, a, science. he's he's not, not a, scientist. a scientist. Your tit. Shortbread, <laughs> I'll put it in your DNA. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather have shortbread with DNA than DNA on me shortbread. Oh, yeah, I don't want, I don't want that again. Oh, oh that dunk, God. Post dunk from Ped. Post dunk. <laughs> post no, dunk. No thanks, I'm on a diet, mate. Uh, should we wrap this up? Because this is. Well, this tastes of pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, if you're not a scientist, could you um, could mm. you could, couldn't you buy yourself like a doctorate online? Mm, I think I probably. Think not, yeah. Doctor yeah, David I, Vitti. I think I, Doctor Dave has got a got a good. Yeah. I honestly think Doctor David Vitti. It sounds really mm. good. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds you, like you'd be doing a phone and feature on this morning. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say. And you, and if you were a doctor, you'd be a David, not a Dave, mm. wouldn't you? David, yeah, you can't. Yeah. You'd have to. You'd have to go back to David. But that's it's fine. More weighty, weighty, respectful yeah. name, isn't it? Yeah, but if yeah. you're only on the phone, yeah. you know, this morning, love. And on, no. you know, a, 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 a portable doctor, don't they? I think you'd. Uh, I think there's just there's something in that, mm. isn't there? Yeah. I could. I could imagine Dave telling middle-aged women what fluids to use. Yeah, Things like that. Dr. David Vitti talks about varicose veins. Mm -hmm. mm. Vitti's varicose veins. <laughs> there you go. And, that's, and that was what that's what it would say, you know, on the This Morning yeah, Strap. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah. They would come up with something like, you know, it would be. They love a good slap on this morning. They love a good They love it. Yeah, yeah. Just, love just says Vitti's vein coming next. Mm. <laughs> Shortbread not included. No. Different show. Different show. No. But don't ask him about That's DNA. Like a, yeah. oh. Tonics tea cake, that. that is. <laughs> oh, I love a tonics tea cake. <laughs> yeah, I do. Mm. I don't listen from tonics. Please don't yeah. tonics tea cake. I think you said the tonics tea cake first. Yeah. I'm thinking, I, I, what's that, a gin and tonic? I think so. I think we should wrap it up right now. Let's, yeah, let's so. before. Gin and tonic. The gin and tonic. Mm. There's one for you to try. Great. It is the Believe summer. Me. It is mm. the summer. Right, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Big thanks to Dave, who isn't a scientist, mm. and Sam, who is playing at Wembley tomorrow. I thought you were Sam going to say, and Sam, who isn't a comedian then, but Sam, who isn't. <laughs> I mean, it's been said before. It's been speculated. Mm. You've, had, you've, you've had worse reviews. I've had much worse reviews this morning. Put that on a poster. Home. He's on his way to Wembley, and yeah. his knees have gone all Wembley, so fair play to him. Sam's fair play to on him. his way to Wembley. He's playing the Hilton over the road. There'll be loads Wembley, of tea and coffee, Wembley. shortbread for all, everyone. I don't, nah, know, where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. Leave it there, tea leave and it there. coffee. Let's go. There might even be some banoffee. You could have threw yeah. anything in, but mm. there you go. Mm. Like, very much like Sam will. Um, listen, oh, yeah. give us the like, subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for listening. We'll see you later. Bye.